You are listening to The Centropic Oracle, an audiobook podcast of science fiction and fantasy short stories that make you think and feel. Disturb the Fields of Treasure by Alexandra Grunberg Isabel cried, her tears staining the tulips she trampled, scraping aside the bright blue, purple, and red petals, leaving a savage rainbow in her wake. The sky was pale blue now, its color dull compared to the canvas she so beautifully massacred, but it still promised clear skies. The light wind barely turned the far-off windmill, but still it turned, and though it was so far away, Isabel felt she could hear the creaking groan of movement pulled from years of stillness, a groan that could easily become a growl. Isabel! Frederick ran toward her careful to hop over most of the petals, but his feet still crushed a few of the beautiful flowers. They seemed to stare up at him from their depressed state, cupped faces accusatory. How dare you destroy such beauty, such wealth, such treasure? It was not treasure yet. That was how they got by. Treasure in nature. It was a trick, an old trick, but it worked. It had always worked. But as he ran toward Isabel, Frederick could hear the growl of the windmill as it slowly turned in the breeze. Isabel, we need to get out of here, he whispered, grabbing her arm. But she pulled from his grasp with a sob. My bracelet, she moaned, nearly tripping over her own feet as she ran through the flowers. Frederick watched her run, hands reaching blindly through the tulips, his feet fixed in place. She glanced back at him, green eyes streaming tears, thin strands of yellow curls sticking to her wet cheeks. Help me, Frederick, please, help, before... A breeze tugged at Frederick's sleeves. He dropped to his knees and began pulling flowers up by the roots, looking for a glint of gold among the colors, cursing under his breath. The words renewed the fervor of Isabel's sobs, but he found it hard to pity her. How could you be so stupid? he asked the words sharper than he intended, but still true. I think the clasp broke, said Isabel, lifting her skirts as she ran, kicking aside the green stalks, revealing the rich brown of the earth. It was on my wrist, and then it wasn't. Oh God, Frederick, I don't know when it fell. The sun beat down on them, the pure white orb free from even the slightest wisp of a cloud. But a different heat dried their mouths, the heat of a fire still far off but beginning to breathe life. It feels the gold, said Frederick, red petals pooling around his feet, rubies dipped in blood. Isabel's tears shimmered on pink petals like sparkling gemstones. The windmill was spinning now, faster and faster, in a wind that was not there, fueled by a breath of fire from deep within its belly. As the great blades tasted the tiny bracelet, and hunger roused the beast from its sleepy illusion. In the turning of the blades, Frederick and Isabel could see the monster begin to take shape, could see the two high windows glow with intelligence and take the form of searching eyes, eyes that would catch the glint of gold before the sun could help them, eyes that already saw the two figures that stood, now not nearly far enough away, shaking with fear. Frederick grabbed Isabel's arm, and this time she did not pull away from him. They ran, their bodies close together, both ignoring the flowers flattened by their pounding feet, a trail of bright petals caught in the deep inhale of breath behind them. White, red, purple, blue, the natural diamonds, rubies, amethysts, and sapphires of the earth were discarded in the rush of fear, still hiding the tiny glint of gold that called to the waking giant. They leapt together over the last row of flowers, still pointing their petals bravely to the sun, their colors shining proudly in defiance of the intruding treasure that had cast them down so completely, that had doomed more than the fields of flowers, that left Isabel and Frederick screaming the alarm and fear, a warning that would make whole villages flee. A great roar rose behind them, free from rest, free to live, to catch the wind and hunt for Isabel's bracelet, and then hunt for whatever else it would ever desire. In a rush of wind came a rush of fire, and the fields of tulips were devoured in flames, encouraged by the pounding flaps of unfurling wings as the dragon roared to life.
We hope you enjoyed Disturb the Fields of Treasure by Alexandra Grunberg, read by Thea Killen-Smith. If you'd like to make a donation to the author and narrator of this story, check out the story page link in the description and click the PayPal Donate button, or pledge your support to us directly on Patreon. Would you like to submit a story to the Centropic Oracle? A link to our submission guidelines can be found in the description.